Hi, I'm Alan Doderlein with the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance, and we're talking today uh, with Bob Steinmetz, who is the secretary of the DBSA West Chicago chapter, and we're talking about family and friends support issues, and thank you for being with us today, Bob. It's my pleasure. So to begin, I want to talk about how you take care of yourself while you're also providing care and support for your loved one who has bipolar disorder. I, I, that's, that's a terrific question, and it's uh, something that we talk to, we talk with everybody who first comes into my group about, and um, it, it's a little bit counterintuitive to people because I, I tell people the most important thing for you when you are taking care of a family member with a mood disorder is you have to be appropriately selfish. You have to think about yourself and make sure that you define what pieces of your life are going to be yours and yours only. I think it's important to set aside some portion of your life and it might be a half hour in the morning. It might be, you know, 10 minutes in the morning, evening, or afternoon um, where you really deal with something that rejuvenates you, something that you find is, uh, is good for your soul. Um, I have a lot of people who do a lot of walking. I have a lot of people that do a lot of reading. Um, sometimes it's... Um, Sometimes it's just a, you know, a phone call to a friend, but something that is personal and meaningful and uh, refreshing. But, but the, the truth is that you, you can't love somebody out of this or disorder. Uh, you can't encourage them out of it or compliment them out of it or motivate them. It, it really is a question of support. And in order to provide the best type of support, you have to be in a very stable and healthy position yourself. How do you go about setting boundaries when you're helping someone? Uh, you know, what are some things that you found effective um, that help you determine when you're going far enough, when you're going too far? How do, how do you set those boundaries? There are a lot of things that somebody who might not be 100% stable might say or do that you might not agree with, but frankly, if they're not really important, if they are just something that occurs in the course of day-to-day -day discussions, hey, you let it go. It does, you know, if somebody has an opinion on something and he's sharing it with me, and I think the opinion is way off base, who really cares? You know, you know un unless I see it leading to something that might damage a relationship or might result in some type of impulsive behavior that you could get, you know, could get the person in, in trouble, I, I tend to let those things go. And it sounds like you have to have a fair amount of frankness and openness about this kind of conversation. You can't, um, you know, uh, go into being mindful of medication without knowing exactly what uh, they're in front of or other treatment considerations, whether it's sleep, uh, interaction with others, uh, right. talk and, therapy. And, and it, uh, you're absolutely right. And, and it's pretty easy to, to talk about the things that somebody needs to do to have a, a healthy life with a mood disorder. You need to take your medication, you need to get enough sleep, you need to get exercise, um, you need to get out and, and be with people, you need to maintain a schedule. And, and, and those things are all, um, they might sound easy, uh, but particularly having had kids who have uh, found the illness or had the illness find them when they were in their late teens or early 20s, it's really difficult to say, you know, you need to get nine hours or 10 hours of sleep a night. By the way, you shouldn't drink. By the way, you shouldn't do any recreational drugs. You know, all the, you know, many things that seem to make up part of their identity, you know, they're gone. And, um, and, and I remember with, you know, with one of my daughters, the discussion I, ha I had was, look, I know what you should and shouldn't do. I'll tell you once, but in reality, this is your illness. And you 
need to find a way to manage it yourself. You need to find out what your limits are. You need to find out what type of behaviors really aren't good for you and then decide which ones that you want to control yourself. And it comes back down to one of the first things you said, which is, you know, you can't do it for them. Uh, you can be supportive, but you can't make them do well, I mean, something. I've tried that. I mean, I, sure. I can say these things based on making lots of, you know, having made lots of mistakes. You know, it, it's like, again, anytime you're raising kids, when, you, when you're having a discussion where you're literally or figuratively jabbing your finger at them and saying, you, you, you a whole lot, it's not going to go real well. So we've talked a lot about what you do when you have a child, uh, an adult child in, in the case we've been talking about, who lives with bipolar disorder. What about if it's your spouse or the person you have a romantic relationship with? What are some of the things that family and support givers need to know about their spouses or partners? You know, I, I, it, it kind of snuck up on me, uh, my, my wife's illness. Um, she had always been a person who was very self-confident, um, very motivated, um, and over time, as the symptoms of the illness kicked in, she went from being self-confident and motivated to overbearing and critical. And we fought a lot. It was, it was very difficult. I certainly had no idea what was going on, except that it seemed like I couldn't do any. Well, it wasn't that I couldn't do anything right. We used to say, you know, sometimes I walk in the door and I'm Robert Redford. Sometimes I walk in the door and I'm Charles Manson. I think I'm the same. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm treated uh, differently. You know, one of the hallmark symptoms of the, of the bipolar illness is that people tend to just destroy relationships left and right. And, um, and, and she tried very hard to, um, to, make, to make amends for it. I was surprised at how long it took me to forgive her. How did you, how did you overcome that? How did you give up the scorekeeping and work towards forgiveness? You know, some of it involves saying, you know what, when you did A, B, and C, pretty rotten and and she you know she would apologize for it and 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 there were times when I know that I had um, responded in kind when I you know she was mean to me and I was mean to her and so there was a lot of some healing and mending that uh, that needed to go on what changes have you made yourself in addition to seeking uh, you know, therapy and professional care for how you reacted to your spouse's bi bipolar disorder. What have you seen change? What, what changes have you made, whether consciously or unconsciously, uh, on your end in the relationship? I think I'm a better listener than I, than I used to be. I, I think sometimes it's important for me, you know, in, instead of jumping on something as soon as it comes out of my wife's mouth, just seeing where things go a little bit. Um, again, worrying about things that are important as opposed to things that, that aren't that important. Now, you meet a lot of people through your support group who are at the beginning of a journey that you have a lot of experience with. What are some of the common first questions you hear from people who are maybe attending a family and friends support group for the first time? One is, are you sure that they're bipolar? Are you sure that it's just not a phase? Um, and because people want, uh, people don't want to come face to face with the fact that yes, this is a condition that they're going to have to manage for a lifetime. So that's, um, that's one question. And how do you address it? I, I don't mean to state it in an overly lighthearted way, but the truth of it is the world isn't coming to an end. I mean, this isn't a death sentence. It, it's, um, it's a medical condition that needs to be taken care of. Um, 
you're going to have to change some things about your life. You're going to have to learn about depression or, or bipolar disorder and the medications and the treatments associated with it. If you want to help your, your kids get past this, you need to be somewhat of a lay expert in, in dealing with it. Well, you've certainly taken your experience and uh, I'm sure helped a lot of people avoid uh, a lot of heartache they might not have needed to have. Thank you so much, Bob, for being with us and for sharing your insights. They've been really helpful. Oh, you're quite welcome. Thank you. Okay.